Hello and welcome to an Automation Professionals tutorial. My name is Dave and I'm the lead programmer. Today we're going to talk about lock control using Yale, Quickset, or Baldwin locks on a Crestron touch panel or tablet. First we'll go through the general layout. The icon on the bottom left is your home button that brings up the general navigation menu where you will find the lock section if you are not already there. An item to note in this area is the house tab at the top where you can quickly lock all the locks in your house. Next on the bottom right you will see power, volume control and level for the room you have selected in the audio video section in which the room will display on the power button so you know which one you are controlling. Please note that on a Crestron touch panel the power and volume up and down won't be here because it's on the front of the touch panel in the form of capacitive touch buttons. On the left you'll see an area where you enter your password. Until you enter your password you will only be able to see the status of your locks, lock them and view your logs. The default password for your system is 1234 and if you click change password after entering the current password you can enter a new one. There is also an option to disable this login for the device being used but it is highly recommended to keep it in place if it, if it is a device that others will be using such as a touch panel or a communal tablet. Once logged in you will see the rest of the controls. First let's start off with the lock list. At the bottom you will see the current lock being controlled as well as its battery level and if it's locked or unlocked. Clicking this will bring up the list of all your locks as well as some information such as if they're locked or unlocked a volume icon indicating their current volume, clock icon indicating the auto relock is enabled, a warning icon indicating if there is an active alarm such as a jam deadbolt or low battery, and obviously the lock's name. At the bottom of the list you can unlock or lock all the locks in the list. You can then either select the lock you want to control or click the bottom menu again to close and go back to the main menu. Back on the main page you will see the current lock status, battery level, and information on any active alarms if any. Underneath are the lock properties which include volume of the locks audible feedback, the operation mode which you can choose between normal, vacation, and privacy mode, one touch lock which allows you to lock the door by either pressing any button on the keypad or by touching the touch screen, auto relock which will relock the doors after a certain amount of time after it was unlocked, and lastly the keypad lockout where you can select how many bad codes will disable the lock and for how long. On the top right there are three options, the history log, the user list, and the option to require a code, which will only appear if you're logged on. The history list will show you the last 50 events, including lock events, which will show you how the lock was locked or unlocked, and if it was by a code, the user who entered that code. Next are the user events, which will include when users were enabled, disabled, saved or deleted. And lastly there are alarm events which will include low battery warnings, jam dead bolts, mismatched user pins and more. On the bottom you can filter the list to only show events that you want to see and if you click clear you can choose to clear the entire log list or only certain sections and keep the rest. If you select the user list you can see all the users that are added to your system. You will see their name, their PIN, how many locks the user is currently enabled on, and what kind of access they have. Underneath you can sync the user list to your locks, which usually isn't necessary, but if a lock had a user added locally and not through the system, then you will get a warning saying a mismatched user was found and this will easily correct that problem. If you click a user, it will bring up a page where you can edit their properties. If you click on the username, it will bring up a keyboard so you can change the name. Below is a keypad so you can re-enter the new code for the user, keeping in mind that the code has to be between 4 and 8 characters and it has to be unique. On the bottom left, there are multiple modes for the user. Custom access allows you to enable the user for certain locks. Enable all forces a user to be enabled on all the locks throughout the house and disable user forces them to be disabled on all locks. Above is a list of locks where you'll be able to enable and disable a user for certain locks around the house. The schedule access option allows you to set a weekly schedule for the user to access your house. The lock list also operates differently than the other modes. 
Now the current status of the user on the lock will be shown under the lock name, while the enable and disable buttons set the locks so that the user will be able to have access to when the schedule is valid. For example, if you enable lock 2 but keep lock 1 disabled, when outside of the daily schedule both locks will be disabled, and when the schedule becomes active, only the locks that are enabled on the list will be enabled for the user. Above is where you set the schedule for each day of the week. In the label of each day, you will see the current schedule status. Clicking the edit button will allow you to set the schedule for that day. You can choose all day access, which will obviously enable the user for the entire day, disable user, which will disable the user for that day, and scheduled access, which you can choose to a start time and an end time so that the user can only have access to your house during, the, uh, during that time, which is good for cleaning staff and trades. Once you're finished editing the user, you can save changes to update the scheduler and lock settings. Also note that you can also delete a user using the red delete button next to the save. Under the user list you will also see add a user, which will take you to the same place we were just where except it will be blank for a new user. A few last features worth mentioning are that these locks can be locked with voice control. Hey Google, lock the kitchen door. Locking the kitchen door, Master Dave. It also can be part of your house going to sleep or going vacant, but refer to my house events tutorial for more on that. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and feel free to check out my other tutorials as well as some cool videos I've made. If you're interested in licensing out my program and modules, contact me at the email address on the screen for information.